Now, I've talked about GT229 before, a protac that targets the androgen receptor for degradation, and how it offers a comprehensive strategic strategy for treating androgenetic alopecia and other related conditions like acne vulgaris. On one hand, we have SCUBE3, a critical protein associated with hair growth that has been identified as a vital factor in reactivating dormant hair follicles. By boosting SCUB3 levels, it is possible to reinvigorate hair follicles that have been dormant for quite a while, and then once we kickstart their activity promoting new hair growth, we can potentially use GT229 to get rid of those androgen receptors that DHT would target to destroy those follicles. So we're essentially bringing back those hair follicles online, allowing them to start growing hair and then eventually introducing GT229 in order to keep them from being targeted by DHT. One thing I will say is, we don't really know if these hairs would potentially still need the androgen receptor in order to work with SCUBE3. So this is just my thinking. This is my personal opinion. I think there needs to be some sort of intricate dance between hair regeneration and androgen receptor activity. And it is conceivable that during the regenerative phase, hair follicles might require some sort of stimulation from the androgen receptor to return to their native productive state. Thus, while SCUB3 stimulates hair growth, it might be essential to reduce the presence of DHT during that sort of rebooting process. So using medications like finasteride or even dutasteride, I think is still going to be in play. However long that period will have to be, I don't know. I think there definitely will be some more research as the clinical trials for SCUBE 3 continues, as well as for GT229, and hopefully things go well for these two potential treatments. So yeah, once you have your SCUBE 3 turning on your dormant hair follicles, it might be essential to keep taking finasteride and dutasteride, because we don't really know if the androgen receptor is still needed to bring back these hair follicles, but assuming that the androgen receptor is still needed, you keep using your scoop 3, bring back your hair follicles, maybe a couple rounds of scoop 3 will promptly bring them back, and then after that, when the hair follicles are there, you target your scalp with GT229 to degrade and remove the androgen receptors, effectively shielding the hair follicle from the miniaturizing effects of DHT binding. And a potential upside that I see here is that once the periodic SCUBE 3 treatment rounds are done for a hypothetical patient, they may only require non-daily, possibly weekly applications of GT229. So in essence, while the prospect of using SCUBE 3 to reawaken dermant hair follicles and GT229 to safeguard them from subsequent miniaturization is enticing, a delicate balance might be required. This balance ensures that the hair follicles receive the necessary stimulation that may or may not be needed through the androgen receptor while they're trying to be rebooted with SCUBE 3, all while taking finasteride or dutasteride to reduce the presence of DHT for those hair follicles that are coming back online, and then after that targeting the hair follicles with GT229 to essentially keep them there. And I think I've been reiterating this point over and over again, but I just want to give the idea of at least how I can see these two medications or treatments going hand in hand and potentially curing androgenetic alopecia. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you got this far, comment rice water in the comment section so I know you got to the end of this video. And be sure to check out the community discord server in the description below. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.